And this is the Advisory Park and Recreation Board and the Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, February 25th, 2001. It's a virtual meeting and it's in accordance with the governor's executive order. And now our chairman, Dan Sybil, will conduct the meeting. Okay, um, seeing there are no public here, or there's no public comments. Um, minutes of January 28th. 2021. Do I have uh, any changes, corrections? Anything? Move to um, accept. I noticed. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. I noticed um, that it was mentioned at the Harbor Management Commission about business at the Cove, um, item J4. Um, it indicates that I asked about a request for food business at the Cove, and I don't think that was me. Oh, I think it might have been someone else. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it could have been me. It doesn't <laughs> ring a bell, though. <laughs> um, I can make a change and just say uh, it, uh, the topic came up. Yeah, do, do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that would be better. Sure. I would move to accept <clears throat> the minutes as amended. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, monthly report. Aye. <clears throat> Cash, Kathy, the fishing derby, is that kind of planned as obviously COVID space? I mean, that's going to be done a little differently? for that yeah we're gonna we're gonna put a limit on the numbers that can register and um and because we do it in three different groups in the morning we think we're there's enough that everybody could space out okay have you gotten any more direction from the state as to Things going to be loosened a little bit. They've they've changed the indoor capacity and the outdoor capacity, so the indoor capacity now is up to a hundred, and the outdoor capacity is up to two hundred. But all the other things stay in place, so you still have to be six feet apart. You still have to have masks. Um, you still, um, for us, if, you, if you're having uh, food indoors, you have to have somebody who's actually serving the food. You can't do buffets or anything like that. So we're beginning to look at the new numbers and determine what we can do within both the um, community center that has the larger space. Salmon Wells House, still a little tricky because they raised that to 25, but we think we can, if we even can, we can maybe get 19 inside the Wells House. And it's really for, for most groups, they're usually in the 40 to 50 range. So that's what we're looking at now with those types of um, processes. All right, very good. Uh, anything else? What do we got going on here? I see um, you're starting to get ready for the summer. I saw my kids get an email. So that's hopefully we'll get back to close to normal in the summer. We can get, um, how is the um, minimum wage going to affect some of these uh, things going on in the summer? Say everything gets back to somewhat normal. How's it gonna affect things? Well, probably when we get to the budget, I can give you a more detailed, but it is going to have a, a it, it will have a big effect on the budget. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, letters and announcements. Anything, Kath? Yeah, I, I was saying earlier that I'm thinking spring. And today we opened our garden reg registration to any new people. Anybody who had a garden last year could renew their garden. And then today we opened up all the other gardens. 
So there are people thinking spring. That's good. Um, anything else? That's, that's all we got. Um, no, probably just to kind of give you guys a heads up that as we begin to look at um, outdoor programs, um, all the different requests for indoor buildings and everything, everything that we, we look at that's new or different or any of the special events coming up, be at the end of the end of spring into the summer, the fall, when we meet with the emergency management team, we check with the health director on what's the best way to look at it, which way to go, what are the state guidelines. So there's a whole process involved in just saying, yes, we're gonna have this event or yes, uh, we can now put these kinds of things in the community center. So just to give you an idea, there's, there's a whole process. It's not just, oh, the governor says you can open everything. It doesn't quite work that easily. So just to kind of give you guys a heads up. So it's a whole process. And as we're working now on all the plans for the summer, for the summer camps, for the outdoor facilities, we're checking with the school superintendent, are the buildings going to be available to us? And all of that is now in the works. So it, it just adds a whole new layer to the planning process. So just to give you the bigger picture. Okay. Very good. Um, all right. Uh, old business, capital improvement requests. I wanted to give you the CIAC has made their recommendations to the um, town manager for consideration. And I wanted to let you know which of our projects made the list. So we've got the Nature Center concrete sidewalks. That was our number, our number one priority that made the list for recommended projects. The community center parking lot that we need to do some work in with all the potholes, et cetera, that made the list. The Greenfield softball field made the list. And that was the recommendation that they had asked that we have money set aside for the classic field of 25,000. Uh, the committee did recommend that we take that 25,000, put it towards the little league field, and then they're gonna give us the balance remaining for that project. Good. And, um, and then the community center lobby where we wanted to do the flooring in there and, and replace the lobby carpeting in the entrance way. So those four projects have made the recommended list. We still have a ways to go in the process, but at least we got four on the list. Mm -hmm. well, that's not what bad. was the classic project? The was classic, it the fence? No, the classic field was to do a complete renovation to put drainage in and then redo the field. That was a $170,000 project. A couple of years ago, they had given a, that was when they were saying that, well, maybe we can give you a little money each year and you could save up till you make the 170. So they gave us 25. We haven't gotten any further money to go towards that, even though we've asked. So Little League asked us if we would consider taking that 25 and seeing it, if it could be uh, put towards the fence at Greenfield for the Little League field. So we made that request and they heard us. So that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And when I talk with the manager, I'll be, um, I'll be explaining that again in detail also. That's great. Well, yeah, now we got to wait and see how far it makes it through. It's still got a ways to go, but we're through the first step. So, Kathy, <clears throat> Kathy, do you have a rough idea of what those four projects are worth off the top of your head? Yeah, I, I have it right here. Um, the sidewalks at the Nature Center were $25,000. Uh, the community center parking lot, we asked for sixty-five, dollars and they've given us twenty-five. dollars the softball field fence, they gave us 28,000 because we're going to use the other money. 
and the community center lobby is 35,000. We get all the little projects, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. And I can put all that in the minutes too. Yeah, put it in the minutes, yeah. Okay, um, new business, proposed budget for uh, this fiscal year. And I see you sent the um, working budget for next fiscal year, right? Right, when I sent it to you, it's yeah. still a work in progress because we haven't gotten all the numbers uh, from our finance department that we're going to be needing. So I didn't want you to think that this was the finished product that we're going to submit. We're waiting on a few items from them. And so, so that's why I called it this year a working budget. It's not the proposed budget yet. Um, so we're either going to get the numbers from them or they're going to add them at the last minute. So would you like me to go through it or do you want me to just highlight some things? I would highlight it, Kathy. Okay. Um, I'll draw your attention. Dan asked earlier about the minimum wage and what kind of an impact that was gonna have. And I'm gonna take a moment to do a, to do a look back at the current year that we're in because that's important as we look forward to what we ask for next year. In this year's budget, a lot of salary, our part-time salary account was cut dramatically because we anticipated there wouldn't be certain programs open. So it was cut to the tune of $138,000 for this year. So looking forward to next year, we put all of that back in because we're anticipating opening. So that's where we're gonna start. So right off the bat, our, our salary and wages went up to 138,000 just to cover what we didn't have this year. And then when we put the increase of the minimum wage on it, in this, in this scenario, when we did this last week, that minimum wage went increase because it, it went up another dollar. So right now in September of 20, it went up to $12. And so everybody this summer will be making 12 or higher. And then August 1st, it goes to $13. So it actually comes in our summer. So staff actually will have two different hourly rates going through part of the summer and then August 1st, it changes again. So that impact was approximately an additional $15,000 for the over the year because it's both the summer and then all our indoor season in 21-22. So that's the big increase in the salary. And, and that is, that is gonna be an interesting process as we move forward explaining that to everybody because they took a big chunk out of us this year. I want that back for next year. Mm -hmm. So that was like closing Willard, the no TR program for the summer. A lot of that is what got cut. So we're putting it back in and, and now we'll be going through that process. Hey, um, Kathy, this, this this format that's here, is this um, just a summary you do for us, I guess, because my question is uh, the breakout, because it's just so sal salary and wages, if if that could be broken out, so part-time could be showed separately, because, I mean, for me, I don't know about the rest of the group, oh. you, you'd you see that better, because it's kind of all lumped in, so it's just hard to, it's hard to pick out what might be, you know, to explain your point. Sure. When we do give it to the manager and the council, they do see the salary breakout. Okay. But I can certainly uh, get that for you. And I would assume the the nineteen and twenty. Obviously, that's an anomaly. Anomaly, and you know the COVID obviously had an impact. That's why those numbers are so under under what we would expect. Obviously. 
That is correct. And that will impact everything as we go through because in, um, in 1920, we, we, we closed down for half of March, all of April, May, and June, and that's gonna impact utilities and everything. So we had to go back to next year to where we, um, where we think we're gonna be. Right. Mm -hmm. so and even the, even the adapted for 2021, obviously has a COVID hit in it too. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 a different way of of it's a new experience for us budgeting because we've got to we've got to figure that we are going to be open for the twelve months. That sounds like a challenge, Kathy. <laughs> What's well, going to yeah. be interesting? Excuse me. It's going to be interesting as we go forward. Yeah. Because everybody's going to forget that they cut us. Yeah, I mean, I think every year all of us keep hearing, you know, we want the pools open longer. And <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. And that's just the pools, you know, not all these other programs, too. Oh, boy. But you oh, will oh, appreciate. Oh, oh, oh. Go ahead. Sorry. Dan, you'll appreciate when you brought the pool up. Um, and what I said was, we're. We're putting in everything that we did last year or in this year. And so we're, we're projecting the pool to be open later uh, like it was last year because it, it worked out really well and school goes back later this year or next year. They literally um, go back in September. Am I right, Mary? Oh, really? Like it was when I was a kid. All right. It's still before Labor Day, though. Oh, well, it's not like when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're putting that all in because we think it's good. The pool is going to be important again this summer. So, um, so I'll keep you posted if I'm going to need help. Huh. Because okay. this might be the year when we may need to hear from the residents. Yeah. Did, um, do you plan on doing those? Please uh, definitely let me know if that's the case. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. I can are, are I can make sell, a, I can make a lot of that happen too. Sorry. Are you going to sell passes this year, Kathy? Or are you going to do the same thing you did last year? We may have to do the same thing we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, only because they haven't changed the guidelines from last year to this year. They're saying you got to use last summer's guidelines. Okay. And we, we can't sell a pass because we won't be able to guarantee that just everybody could come. So, um, so do you have a plan for Willard then? I know you have a plan for Mill Woods. Do you have a plan for Willard then? We'd probably use the same plan and just have it sign up for, um, for um, you, you'd probably be able to pick, you sign up for Willard or Mill Woods to get a, a, an appoint, a reservation. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're, we're working through that now, Dan, so don't hold me to it. I'd okay. rather sell the pool pass because we can make more money, but I don't know that we could really guarantee that all of those people can get um, a reservation. Yeah. Because Willard will be smaller than Mill Woods mm -hmm. because we have to do like um, spaces that everybody can sort of sit in and put their towel in. And it just has, we're lucky we have the grass at Willard. That's going to help because the decks don't have a lot of space. Boy. All right. And, and we're also trying to figure out, we're going to, our plan is to have our summer camps probably with, with uh, reduced enrollment because that's all part of this. But we're trying to figure out how do we give the pools a time, uh, excuse me, the camps a time to go swimming. Mm -hmm. And we don't think, as you can see, staff have been doing a lot of brainstorming here. We're not sure whether or not we can do lessons yet at the pools, but we have asked, would it be possible to use the indoor pool at the high school? Maybe we can do lessons there. I'm not sure budget wise how all that'll play out, but we're trying to look at different options. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll be giving you more details as they begin to materialize more. We believe lessons are important, but we also want to keep the pool open for the public. So the lessons they've made very stringent with guidelines, it's, it's almost not worth it. You lose money to do, not even lose money, but they're saying like you can teach four kids at a time. That would be nice for private lessons, but it's not park and rec lessons. Anyways, it's a work in progress. Wow. Only, but we do yeah. want to keep the pool open longer and figure out the rest. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Okay, that sounds like a challenge, Kathy. Wow. I know it's a it's an interesting process for all the staff because we're going through different times. But on yeah. the good news, you know, once we're headed to the nicer weather and people are being outside, I think all of that'll help. Yeah, they go boating at the uh, cove. So if we make our money there. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> Kathy, the, the, the budget schedule as far as um, you've submitted to the town manager, what's the time frame then council and all that? What's the? We'll be submitting um, by next uh, Wednesday. That's when we meet with the managers. So that's when we'll have as best we can all the numbers that we have. And then it'll become the manager will work on his budget and he'll submit it to the council. Hang on one second. Let's see. It will go to the, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Budget request. So, um, so our end will be confirmed like around March 5th, and then it'll start where it'll go to council to work on it, and they'll have a public hearing and their work dates, but they haven't set those dates up yet. Normally it's the, uh, it might be the second Monday in April that they usually do the um, public hearing, but that might change if it's school vacation or something. But they, they look at that and then council works on it in, in April and it has to be adopted by May 15th by charter. And last year, the governor gave an extension on that, but they don't anticipate that this year. We're probably one of the towns that gets it, the, that does it the latest. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody have anything else? Just All right. Uh, no, I was just going to okay. go through any other highlights in the budget. But I, if okay. you guys have questions, that's just as easy. Kathy, the Park Improvement Nature Center, that just entered in 2021 because there was no budget for that before? There's always a budget. And what the, um, what the finance department does is they transfer that money out to the nature center budget. So when they do the actual for the year, they never show that number. It's just their method of accounting. Okay. They, they've given it to us every year, but they don't include it when they give the actual because they consider it a transfer. Okay. And, and I always feel the town should at least pay for part of the utility. It doesn't cover the utilities, but it it sort of keeps it in the in the mindset. And support services, what what's included in that? Because that's that's got a pretty significant increase. That increase is for the support services is a lot of different things that we do. And um, we're asking, we tried to get asked for it last year, we're trying again this year. The town and the board have a shared position with our early childhood coordinator. And uh, we also get, we always look for grant funds to help fund it. And so right now with the town puts in 15,000, the board puts in, uh, I think they're up to 20,000. And um, we've been trying to get the town match up to that 5,000. And a lot of times that gets caught, but we keep trying. Thank you. 
And I wanted to bring your attention to our rental facilities, which includes my all uh, my all time favorite portalettes. And our portalette budget this year is going to be over budget because of because of the um, pandemic. We normally clean our portalettes once a, once a year. I was going to say once a year. That wouldn't be very no. good. <laughs> once a week. <laughs> This year, we, we did them twice a week, and we also put two down at the Cove. We were thinking ahead and figured that there would be a lot of traffic down there. So the budget, did we anticipate it's going to be over by about $2,000. That really is the cleaning of the portalettes. And we're putting that in again next year. And we'll see how that plays out, because we feel that we, we've still got the pandemic. And that seemed to work out. We Believe it or not, we surprisingly we didn't receive a call about uh, a, a dirty portalette this year. That was it because normally we get those calls. Usually they're pushed over, those kinds of things. But um, that um, we knew that that would be we we should be able to absorb it in this year's budget. Um, so we shouldn't go. Uh, we should be able to take it from another account. But I like to show people what actually transpires. And, sh and put that in the budget. Uh, and does, does Parks and Rec, oh, sorry. Do, no. do Parks and Rec budget, um, does that include youth and social services? They have a separate budget. Yeah. It's so a that um, support services, can you explain that again? Oh, sure. It's gone up 10 grand in the past year, right? No, ten. It's gone up ten grand in the past two years. Oh, I got my budget here. Um, yes, and and that was um, that's where we've put the early childhood coordinator support position for that because that position is actually on the it's on the board side. They handle all the finances and the town send support so that's why it's not in salaries and so we've been building that up over the years so that has gone up so that's part of the increase there for every year we've put a little more money in that to begin to um, f help fund that position but i'm going to tell you what's in support services even i can't remember so we do a lot of support to our, um, our theater programs, our Red Cross, we have to pay a Red Cross aquatic fee. We also have, believe it or not, we have to pay a music licensing fee for any music that we use anywhere. So you have to pay to the people, it's kind of like a royalty to be able to use it. And this license, lately has gone up every year. They're driving us nuts. And it's actually two different companies that you have to pay to that allow our fitness instructors to use music, to allow anything we're doing to use music. I guess about 10 years ago, they came out and they went after all the park and rec de departments. They sort of picked on, they've been going state by state and they came up to us probably about 10 years ago. So that's in that fee. Um, we have funds in there that when we take the, when the town uses the showmobile, we have to use, um, uh, uh, physical services personnel, uh, and they get paid overtime. So we have a little money in there to pay for that overtime when the town uses the showmobile. We do, um, we do support services to our, um, when, when the keen, uh, the Keene Road Race, Mikey's Road Race, and Holidays on Main, those are done in conjunction with the Park and Rec Department. And the town gives them a stipend of $500 each that goes towards the police costs for those events. Because those over the years have gotten very steep just because costs have gone up. Um, so those are like our, it's our support that we provide in a variety of different avenues. So Kathy, the, the, the maintainers, if you will, that do work for Parks and Rec, 
Are there any of their salaries in this, in the wages, or is that all physical services? That's all physical services. Okay, but yet the overtime you just referenced, I don't want to say why is that. So is that the only overtime? If they do overtime for doing a ball field, is that out of physical services or here? No, it's, it's not out of the park and rec budget. Anytime physical services does overtime for us, um, generally that is is either if they do overtime for a ball field, that would come out of the physical services budget if it was something um, special, like when Little League does the all-star games and we do the overtime for that, we pay for that. If Little League just wanted to do a game on Saturday and wanted the field uh, groomed and lined, they would, we would ask them to pay for that. Um, so Parks and Rec doesn't have a budget for that type of overtime. If any group rents a field on the weekend and they want it groomed and lined, they're offered, you can take it as is, or you can pay this amount of money and that's what it costs to get it uh, groomed and lined. And the, the showmobile cost, at one time, they, we used to have one Park and Rec person and one physical services person go out on the showmobile when it was rented out or used in town. And um, then over the years, um, maintenance felt that they really needed two people to handle that machine. And so they put on, uh, instead of the park and rec person, they put on another maintainer. And um, we got money in our budget because we do a lot of it in town for town events. And um, it wasn't, we weren't going to be able to afford it if we didn't have some money to pay for it. That's a very long winded explanation. I'm sorry. Great. Right. Anything else, anyone? Okay. All right. Um, Next on the agenda is the Solomon Wells House. Kathy, I think you talked a little bit about it, but uh, yep. has anybody expressed interest in renting the house at all or? We've started now with graduation parties. People have started to call and we've asked them to uh, call back a, a little later to see um, if it's gonna be feasible or not to open it. But the graduation parties are easy, 50 people without even thinking about it. And, and that's what we have to watch for. Because we have to assume that it might rain and they have to be inside the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll, you'll update us next meeting, yes. how that's progressing, all right. I guess the, 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 um, only com the only comment I have on that, and I don't know if anybody's given a thought, but the potential for, you know, I don't know if it, I don't say invested or rental, but, you know, maybe a tent outside so they could do stuff outside and you could still get the rental and they could use the house. And I don't know, just a thought that it's a shame to lose, you know, because of the outdoors, different and tents with good weather. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know how, how it might work. We could consider that. We have the farmer's market there Thursday and um, I'm sure they're coming back. And then it would be a matter of, if we rented it, do we get the tent or do the people get the tent? Right. So those would be some good things to think about. Okay, um, the Keisha Farm Committee. I missed the last meeting, but let me have, find my notes here. What happened? Um, so as you know, there was really no funding appropriated um, so we're trying to uh, figure out ways to get uh, a plan in place without much funding. So there's a few resources. One is the uh, Newtown Community Farm in Newton, Mass. And it's a model nonprofit community farm. And uh, we can look at it to maybe model things after. Not that we're going to have a farm there or anything else, but it gives us some ideas on what we want to do. Um, Luce and Zarl's helped out. And... Um, there's some hoop houses or greenhouses there on the, on the property. And um, he's got an idea how much those cost to repair. And we've actually talked to the Boy Scouts a little bit about doing some work on those. Um, they have to do a soil analysis. 
So there's a person um, that was identified for doing that. And I don't know if he's gonna give it to us for cost or if he's gonna charge us half or what he's gonna do, but uh, I think he's gonna give us a break on that. And then uh, the Westfield Education Foundation um, might be interested in some things for as educational things for the kids. Um, uh, so that would be more like towards high crest school, bring the kids over to the farm and uh, show them things. And, you know, especially if you have the greenhouses going, you, you can even have the kids maybe do some work on the greenhouses. Um, the state historic preservation office, um, they did tour the property. And uh, what they're gonna do is um, give us an idea of whether that barn is feasible to keep, whether we should knock it down or give us an idea how much it would cost to, to uh, you know, fix it up. So we got a state grant for that and it doesn't cost the town anything or we're or applying for a state grant to run the process, but it will not cost the town anything. And that's good because that was gonna actually be a part of uh, what we wanted done um, from the consultant. So at least that'll give us an idea, right? We can use this barn for something we can't, I don't know, has anybody besides myself been able to go in there or what it is, is an old dairy barn. So the, I've never been in a dairy barn, but until then, but the floor isn't flat. It's got, it's like almost scooped out and it's part of it is where the cows stand. So it's not a level floor when you walk in. So if you're going to use it for anything other than a dairy barn, you have to figure out a way to level the floor, if nothing else. And then there's other issues uh, too, but the we got to look at the um, loft. There's a giant loft, which is one giant open space, the whole size of the barn upstairs. So it's, it's kind of a neat thing. And, you know, we hope it is repairable, but uh, I don't know at this point. Well, I, you know, hopefully in the next couple months, we'll find out. Um, and then the last thing is they're looking to break um, people on the uh, committee into subcommittees. So the subcommittees are social media and public outreach, land use and survey. And I think they want me in the land use committee, but like I said, I missed the last meeting. Um, and I don't know how much time that's gonna take up, but it's a lot of this is gonna depend on the work the University of Hartford does for us and uh, you know how much time they can put into it. We did lose the person that was supposed to be in charge from the University of Hartford, he was let go. And so they got another person, which I haven't met yet because I wasn't at the meeting. So, so that's everything I know. And uh, it is moving. It's not costing the town anything at this point. Um, and we'll see how things go from here, but it's, uh, a giant swath of land and uh, you know it can be used for so many different things at once hopefully something good comes out of this I'm sure it will um, I don't know if anybody's got any questions or anything but that's kind of everything I know Dan, Dan with the budget process coming up is there is there a zero is there any is there any money being carried to do anything do you know that or anybody's putting any money or it's just kind of like we're not, praying for we're praying for everything for nothing. Um, yeah, we're kind of doing everything for nothing. So, you know, it's uh, interesting. They, I I do wish that they, you know, spent the money on the consultant. Uh, it was about fifty five thousand dollars, and that would have given us a plan, just like we have a Miller's master plan. And uh, you know, at that point, we could solicit things from the. Uh, groups in town that might be interested in, in developing part of the plan. But right now we don't have a plan, so it's, uh, you can't really solicit help for something you don't even know what you want to do yet. So it's, it is what it is. Um, and we'll see how it progresses. I'm sure something good will come up, come uh, out of this. Um, so I think there'll be passive recreation. I think there'll be some farming, um, uh, and I think there'll be athletic fields and, um, you know, maybe a few other things too as well, but, uh, it's, it is a really giant piece of land, actually two giant pieces of land on both sides. So, 
you don't realize how far it is, especially on the side with the school. You don't really help know, realize how big that is until you walk it. it it's really um, large. It's very large. So how much of that land is usable? Isn't there a bunch of wetlands back there? I think it's only like four acres that aren't out of the, oh. yeah, it's something like that. It's not, most of it is usable, believe it or not. That's great. So, and I'm not sure what's exactly where the wetlands are, to tell you the truth. I, I, I know that it's, I was kind of shocked at how much of it was wetlands, which really wasn't a lot. So the bulk of it is usable. Um, there is a house on there too, on the property. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. So I don't even know what kind of shape that's in. I, I didn't get to go in it or anything, but that will certainly be up to the town what they want to do with it. So, oh, there is one other thing there. I'll, I'll tell you now so that you guys are aware. There's like an invasive species of uh, right around the barn. It's, I don't know what kind of grass they call it, but um, to cut it would be one thing, but to actually get rid of it would be quite another thing. <laughs> um, so I don't know that that will ever happen, but it is interesting that it's, uh, you know, it's there, it's, it's, uh, it's something that the town will have to contend with. So, all right, um, any other questions? Okay, um, uh -oh, we lost Colleen. Oh, her arm is there. So, all right, board member comments. Um, anybody with any comments, questions? I, I do have uh, one thing that um, I'm still concerned about. I think there's other board members that are concerned about is um, the maintenance on a lot of these athletic fields. Um, I'm not sure that we've really gotten a great answer as to you know, how these are being maintained. And um, it, one of the things that concerned me, it, it wasn't even on the athletic fields, but um, what concerned me was uh, at the reservoir where there's potholes every year. And it seems like the town doesn't find them. Residents find them. It's, that's not that big of an area. I mean, do they have a checklist where they go in and check these different facilities and different uh, things of town every year? Just like a night watchman would go around checking something every night. I'm not saying you check it every night, but I'm saying like once every two weeks you're checking out these different facilities and checking them so that you're preventing um, any issues. And really we shouldn't be getting the same reports every year um, about the same facilities from, um, you know, from town residents. How many years have we gotten issues about potholes at the reservoir? I mean, it, it, they should be checking these things. So I don't know how anybody else feels, but that's kind of how I feel about a bunch of these things. Anybody? I, I was just wondering. I, li I like the potholes with my Jeep, but yes, <laughs> I, with a regular vehicle. Go ahead, Colleen. <clears throat> I was just wondering if, um, if Kathy, if you had a chance to talk to Gary, uh, you had mentioned that you would bring um, my suggestion about a liaison and, and did you have that conversation and, and what was the outcome? I did have a conversation with him and um, then uh, both, both of us got busy and I have not followed up with him, but he said he was gonna look into it and think about it. And it really is now up to me to get back to him um, just to see, he, he wanted to look into that and see, I explained how, um, you, you thought of a liaison that there is on the school side and said that they were thinking of something like that. So he was gonna look into it and, and look into it with physical services. But I have not followed up with him to see where he's at with that. And I can do that. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? 
I think my my only and not to dwell on, I guess my only comment is that um, and I haven't been on the board as long as some some of the rest of you and um, but I think overall and obviously we heard a lot from the sports group early on and I think it was a frustration because and again we're only an advisory board so we really don't we don't set policy and stuff and we rely on Kathy to get the information and so on and so forth but I guess I still need to be convinced because I, I just I think we just keep talking in circles about how stuff is getting done or not getting done. And it kind of edges on the, you know, I don't want to say the trust issue if we're just kind of being appeased and not by you, Kathy, by any means, but in general by physical services that we're relying on them. And yet we're still hearing, and obviously not more recently, but we're going in a vicious circle. And I, I think the stuff we've been hearing I guess I'm really not sure that things are being done potentially the way that they could be done, maybe as efficiently or, or, or in any other effort, because I know certainly Suzanne and I know Colleen's made comments and stuff and um, we're kind of getting information back, but I, I'm not trying to call people on it saying they're not being truthful, but I, I don't know how we can still continue to hear that dissatisfaction and yet we're hearing everything is being done the way it is. And I know everybody's stretched um, certainly with staffing and if everybody could get more staff, I'm sure they could do a better job. But I, I, I mean, that's just my gut thing. And again, I'm being very cautious because I'm not trying to, you know, say people aren't doing their job. But um, it's difficult, I think, for you, Kathy, to have um, responsibility for most a lot of these facilities that, you know, we're hearing complaints about. And yet you have no control over whether and how the work is getting done. Um, so and, and I know it's a trust issue. And if they you put something in and they tell you it did it, you have to trust that it got done. And then, you know, you don't have staff to go out and check to make sure, but I, I guess that's my general. And again, I'm only seeing it from the outside. I don't have specifics, but that's just kind of my take on it and where, where I see it today. Ideally, in my opinion, I think if we had the option and I don't know if you think it would work better, but you know, a parks and rec department that had its own staff that did their own work and you had full control, that's ideal. I don't know if we'll ever get there. I don't know what it would take to get there. Um, but, you know, when you rely on somebody else that says they got stuff and they're doing it, um, that it makes it a little more challenging. And it puts a lot of, a lot of you know, you, then you hear from us in a sports group and yet you have no control over it. So that's my, I'll stop there and leave it. Anybody, anybody else? I mean, is there something as a board that we could collectively bring so it's us as citizens sharing our concern as the advisory board or making a recommendation or something like that? Like, is, is there something that we can do so it's not on you, Kathy, to, um, to sort of encourage something to happen? As, <clears throat> as a board, you can choose to do, you know, you are an advisory board to the town. So you certainly can, can make um, recommendations or, or talk to them. I'm trying to think of what's the best way to approach it. And I'm wondering if maybe if I have a conversation with the town manager, and maybe invite him to one of our meetings. I know he came a, a, a year or two ago when we had the sports groups, but we didn't really have, you didn't really have a dialogue with him. He was kind of just there to listen and hear and take information. But I don't know if that might be an idea to consider um, to see if, you know, I'm not, I can't speak to for his time or anything, but may, maybe to start there um, Mike is right, and Mike, that conversation comes up. Dan will attest to that with um, splitting parks and rec and, and physical services, that kind of thing. And they've always looked at it as a budget item, that it, it, it's always, from their perspective, made more sense to keep it all together. Um, and so you live with what you have, but certainly um, there, there are different ways we could look at it. Um, I might suggest starting with the town manager, maybe having a dialogue with them if that's something you're interested in, or you know you could look at 
at, at drafting a letter or something to him about your concerns, but he's pretty open guy. And I think he'd come to a meeting if that was something you, you wanted to have. I can't really speak to this because this is this, you know, I'm always fighting to have Parks and Rec have a priority. And, and a lot of times other stuff just takes priority just because of what's going on. And, you know, a lot of it is legit. I'm not saying it isn't, but, um, but it, it certainly, you have a couple different ways to look at it. I don't know if that's helpful or not. I mean, I think it would be a good idea if we had the town manager, uh, you know, at the next meeting or the following month, one or the other. And, uh, you know, what we all keep hearing is the same thing um, from the sports groups and from others in town. So I don't know of much that has changed. I don't know if anybody else knows much that has changed. So, um, yeah, I think we really need to talk about this. Yeah, I, I think that would be great. All right, I'll talk with him and see if he's available for the March or the April meeting. Okay. Thank I'll you. try for the March meeting, you know, okay. trying to do it before we get into season. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm sure his schedule with the upcoming budgets makes, it, it becomes more difficult as we get beyond yeah. that too. Yeah. 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 Okay, any, any other comments? Good. Okay, uh, Harbor Management Commission. Replacement engine for the Harbor Master boat. Are we making any progress, Kathy? We are, we've ordered it. We've uh, selected, uh, I have my little note. This is Zuki 150. Oh, see, Mike knows. So you've been talking with Rachel. Yep. Um, so, so we went through the whole quote, quote, blah, quote process as we spoke earlier, and Rachel's been in touch with um, Mike and our town mechanic, and um, we also talked to the fire and police uh, personnel that deal with it, and um, this model was available that the, um, what they've told us is three to four weeks to come in, so that should give us time to get it in and get the boat ready to go. So that's where we're at. Okay. Mike, um, I don't know if you have more on that. No, not much more. Yeah. Kathy, how much did it end up costing and where did you get it from? It's, um, we, we're going to a boat works in South Windsor okay. because they were able to let us know that it, we could get it within three to four weeks mm -hmm. and 15,000 eight hundred and thirty nine dollars okay and it's a brand new engine brand new so it'll okay. come with the warranty and everything good and then we will have to do some work to put it on the boat all right i think the install was included with the price oh okay thank you well that's good so mike you have a boat this year finally yeah, one of the paddling. Kathy, Kathy, that's all money from the uh, Cove Fund. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else with the uh, harbor management, Kathy? Anything? I don't know if Mike has anything else. Nope. People are ice fishing right now. Yeah. Oh. Or should stop that soon. Probably then. Yeah. Yeah. I drove down there last weekend. They were all out on the ice. And we this, just, we were just told today we, we had ice skating at Spring Street and we had seven inches and they've been watching it and gradually the inches have gone down. We're down to like three and a half now. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't have ice skating there today. But um, so the ice is melting. I don't know what the weather's like. So I keep be, I, I'm still thinking spring. That's it. Yeah. Does the town put any signs up uh, at, on the cove for no ice fishing when it gets thin? I mean, is there anything or just people just go, there's no signage anywhere to say the ice is safe or nothing down there? 
No, we don't, we can't, we can't, we don't go out and measure that. Because okay. that's, that's federal. Spring Street, we own the cove. We don't really own the water. But we have talked to the police when we felt it was getting very dangerous that they would go down with their um, loudspeaker and say, you have to clear the ice, it's not safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? All right, no, right. Um, move I'll to adjourn. motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I'll second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. <laughs> We'll see you guys next month. Have a good one. Good night. See you all. Okay, right. thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. bye.